Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're going to have ourselves a 2v2. That's right, a 2v2 on Vox Farmlands. Our heroes today are going to be Mr. Osa, PL, playing as the German austere player in the blue. And his ally in the yellow is going to be none other than Sins Bolgakov. Bulgak Bulgakov, I don't know, Sins Bulgakov, playing as the yellow OKW player. Their opponents in the red, leading the charge as the Soviet Red Army, it's going to be Kershakov. That is Kershakov, you can see him there. And his ally in the pink or purple, depending on your preference, it is Coconut Doug. That is Coconut Doug as the purple Soviet. Kursakov asking if side increase uh, works uh, times three. What he is referring to is that um, Mr. Osa uh, in the loading screen, it showed that he had the bulletin for the sight range increase on his uh, Tiger Ace. Uh, he had it three times. So that's what they're wondering about. And well, I don't actually know, so if anybody knows if those do stack or not, I hear both sides of the coin. People saying, yeah, it always works, and sometimes, no, it works if there's different bulletins that have the same effect. They stack, but if it's the same bulletin and only once, I don't know. Just let me know if you know the correct answer. But that kind of is a little bit of a spoiler. We know that Mr. Osa is going to be going for his elite troop doctrine eventually. But anyways, let's take a look at... Well, the field, I suppose you could say, a little bit. I don't think we've actually casted a game in this map, the uh, Vox Farmlands. It's a... Uh, well, it's a farmland. Pretty cool. <laughs> so, build order-wise, we have Mr. Osa going for his Tier 1, like you would expect, getting a Sniper out with a Grand Squad coming up before that. So, a bit of a Sniper play here. We'll uh, keep a track on that guy. His ally not getting anything so far as far as trucks go. I mean, he has the truck out in the field just pushing the enemy around because, well, that's what you can do. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything, so I guess it's fine. And he gets himself a Volksgrenz, three in total. Three now out on the field with, obviously, the Panzer, sorry, Storm Pioneer on the field. Their opponent, Mr. Kerskov, went for Tier 1, getting himself a Penal Battalion. You can see it out on the field right now, engaging the uh, Storm Pios off at a distance. And he also has conscripts, you know, just to have a little bit of a mixed arms with a scout car on the field as well. Combat engineers are forced to retreat from the south, so there you go. Up in the north, we see that the pink player, Mr. Ah, shit, I forgot the name. <laughs> uh, Coconut Doug <laughs> went for tier two, got himself a Maxim machine gun, covering up in the north with some conscripts as well. So no specific spam for either player, more of a combined arms, but each focusing on a little bit of a different thing. We see that Osa is now building himself another Grand Squad, then following it up with an MG-34. Wait, MG-43? Damn, now I'm actually confused. I, I think it's MG-43, right? MG-43 is the, ra the normal one. 34 is the one that the OKW can potentially get, so we'll see that. We also see that a Doctrine has been selected for the pink player, and that is the Shock Rifle Frontline Tactics. Now, you may see right there that the icon colors is a little bit darker. I am going to have to work on that. Again, most of you may have noticed that I've been having some issues with my overlays. I'm working new ways of getting them. Maybe I won't have to do this in the future, you know, with ops mode and things coming out. But for now, until that comes into effect and it, you know, makes everything I'm doing useless, I am going to continue to try to improve it. And, well, one of the things is going to have to be fixing that color right there. Anyways, down south we see the scout car supporting the uh, penal battalion, forcing away a Volksgren squad. So the German forces lose the south and the north. So both fields are going to be in the possession for the uh, for the Soviets, which is going to help them quite a lot with getting their vehicle play out. Center of the map, we do see that uh, Bulgakov has gotten himself the mechanized regiment headquarters, which gives him those uh, those nice little repair things. But um, well. We'll see what he gets from that. So far, nothing. He has lost his uh, one of his uh, Volksgren squads. He is now down to two Volksgrens and only the Storm Pio squad. That's going to be tough. We do have the uh, sniper teams on the field for Kersikov. Only one sniper so far, but that is going to be quite effective against the, the Germans. More specifically against the... Uh, the OKW, we see the German sniper moving in their direction, trying to get a counter snipe. Snipers vault over the fence, get themselves in cloak, and take a shot at Pios. Pios 
the least important target here for snipers. The sniper moving up, gets in the range of the Soviet snipers. Got to go for a counter snipe, but it is a two-man team, which is going to make it annoying. Snipers take a shot at the storm piles. The sniper shoots back in return. Eliminates one of the snipers. Down south, we hear explosions and shit going on, but I want to see if the snipe goes down. No, it does not. So we see that the scout car has been... No, not the scout car. No, yeah, the scout car. The house itself as well collapsed. I guess there was a mine there? Well, would have been interesting to know what it was, but I wasn't paying attention to that because I wanted to see if the snipe, counter snipe uh, took effect. It did take effect for a little bit. The sniper went down, but it is a two-man squad, which is a major complaint from the very beginning of the game that the Soviets get a two-man sniper team rather than one, which makes counter sniping very difficult. Conscripts pushing forward, getting right on top of the Grenz. The Grenz are taking quite a beating down to one man, forced to retreat. There's two more Grenz squads and an MG-43. 42. That's what I'm, I'm... That's why I got confused. It's MG-42, not even 43. It's the 42 and MG-34. So, yeah, there you go. Maxim Machine Gun pushing up. The MG-42 not really set up in any angle whatsoever. It's actually caught itself in the middle of the haystack, so it's just completely useless there. Forced to retreat, the sniper backing off, getting some shots, shooting and scooting. Gets himself into some cover, trying to run away. Does manage to uh, cloak and stay out of the field. Now he's actually exposed. The sniper makes itself known, but he manages to duck behind the shed and get itself out of the uh, line of fire. Could actually hit retreat right now and make it out of there just fine. We'll continue to just huff it and try and stay alive. All forces for Mr. Osa have actually been routed. We see that his ally... Uh, Bulgakov is pushing forward, tr trying to uh, control the territory. We see a combined effort here by both Soviet players as well. Maxim machine gun, rifles, and even guard squads on the field. So we have docking selection for most players, as we do see that Panzer Fusiliers have been acquired by Bulgakov. So we have his ally Bulgakov going for the breakthrough doctrine, and Kevzakov gets himself the guard mortar coordination tactics. So that is something to keep in mind. Maxim Machine Gun stopping the uh, Panzer Fusiliers down south. They are uh, light infantry, but they do have a nice firepower in range, so as long as you can keep them supporting something else, they'll inflict a lot. The sniper on the field still getting some shots off at a distance, getting kill after kill on the Maxim Machine Gun. Maxim Machine Gun done the three men. The guard squad pushes forward, trying to get right on top of the. Oh! Grenade goes off on top of the Volksgrenz. Oh! Down to one man! Look at all the gore, all the pieces, everybody died. Down to one man, barely makes that out of there. Very lucky to be alive. Volkskrenz retreating, Panzerfuss leaders retreating as well. They're actually retreating pretty quickly. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's actually running rather fast. And look at the carnage, all the body pieces, legs lying all over the place. Brutal. And a rifle just left there on the field. Up in the north, not much going on. The fighting has been focused down south. We have Maxim Machine Gun span here for uh, Coconut Doug. He has four Maxim Machine Guns on the field, which will allow him to just simply lock down territories up in the north until some vehicles can be brought into the uh, into the engagement. Now, finally, we see that a uh, flak half track, or oh, actually, no, wow, I'm actually talking out of my ass. That's a Stuka coming onto the field for Volgakov. Interesting choice. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of Maxims, so I suppose it is a nice way to dislodge them. It is very slow to do so, but, you know, I guess it works. And we have guards and all the infantry down south just recapturing territory. MG-42 with uh, Garenz there for support and the sniper behind him pushing forward. Going to get themselves right on top of a sniper squad. Sniper squad taking a shot at the Garenz. These other Grenz could potentially push forward. There they go, getting themselves equipped with LMGs. Going to be able to provide a lot of firepower as the Grenz just go to cap some territory. LMG getting a nice burst off on that sniper. The sniper shoots back in return down to one man, but he is forced to retreat. LMG burst goes off, but does not manage to get the kill. Garen is forced to retreat, and away he goes. Sniper behind them just covering the zone. And center map, we see a lot of uh, conglomeration here of conscripts just sitting around. Up in the north, the uh, officer is forced away, as well as Panzer Fusilier, since there are some shock troops around. And there's Maxim Machine Guns just holding the territory. Northern Victory Point getting captured by the Storm Pioneers of Volgakov. And we now have the Stuka on the field. Stuka may be activated here. We do have a Maxim Machine Gun and a Conscript Squad nearby. Stuka takes a barrage. And the Conscripts are retreating. Maxim Machine Gun going to get the brunt here of the attack. They end up retreating. And they... Oh! Oh! 
barely make it out of there down to two men. Nasty shot there, but they do make it out. So the Stuka making itself known with quite an impact right there. For his part, Mr. Osa has gotten himself tier two. Nothing much coming out of that. Back at the base, we see tier three coming down for Kursakov. No additional tech for Mr. Coconut Doug, but Coconut Doug obviously has the ability to call in KV-8s and IS-2s later on, so I highly doubt that he's going to be building any additional tech. Up in the north, we hear the engagement of the shock troops as they force away a Volkskrenz squad. Going to go recapture that victory point. So Soviets do have a substantial lead, 464 to 400, I mean 364 to 472, so over a 100 point lead at victory point, so they are getting... Getting quite away with it for a bit there. We see a massive push here down south by Garenz and the uh, Volksgrenz and Fusiliers. Getting a nice flank on that Maxim machine gun, forcing it away. Not getting the kill, but, you know, they do force it away. MG42 stopping the advance here of conscripts and combat engineers. The combat engineer is going to back off and try to capture the territory as the conscripts do get pinned down and forced to retreat. Grenz getting in the way. Not going to be able to get the kill on the conscript squad, but they do push forward to get on top of the... Uh, of the combat engineers, combat engineers retreat. They go through an excellent path. They actually retreat further back and make it out of there just fine. Fusiliers and Volksgrenz getting some more shots off on the conscripts as they retreat. But it looks like they'll be just fine as more conscripts just flooding the field with snipers for support and combat engineers with flamethrowers just to heat things up. Boom, boom. Panzer Grenadiers on the field for Osa. That is a prime target there for the snipers, but they are very powerful against infantry, and we do have a lot of infantry on the field. No vehicle play so far for either Soviet player, so... Well, I mean, aside from the scout card that originally came out for Kursakov. Stuka Barrage going right on top of everything. It hits the cache a little bit, but doesn't actually nail anything besides that. A little bit of a disappointing play there, but it's fine. I mean... Ooh, squad up in the north gets eliminated there for Kursakov. And uh, he is going to be pushing... I mean, Bulgakov, sorry. Pushing with everything. He's got his officer, his fusiliers, and his Volksgrenz coming up. He's going to run into one shock troop squad. Shock troop squad is not really supported. There's a second shock troop squad coming in. But with the popping of... Propaganda, I think that was? Or what was that? I don't know. Does this guy actually have propaganda? I don't actually know, and I can't actually see the abilities there. But anyways, regardless, the point is that the shock group squad was forced to retreat. And the second squad moves back. Ah. Sorry. Second squad moves back into the cover of the Maxim machine gun. A little bit of a bait there, and they managed to force it away. The southern victory point has been captured by the German forces. We have a Garen squad moving... Well, not moving, actually. She's taking cover behind the haystack. Sniper moving up with the cover of a combat engineer squad. Not in an angle to be able to shoot. You can see that it's actually a little bit obfuscated there by the haystack. No, actually, it's not. It's holding fire. That's why I was looking at it. And I was like, no, it actually does have a clear shot. Maxim Machine Gun getting a nice flank there on the Garand squad. Getting it uh, suppressed with the conscripts moving in on their blind side and getting right on top of them. Putting a lot of damage in there and forcing them away. Sniper a little bit further back, covering the zone. The sniper is quite exposed here to be counter-sniped by the Soviet sniper. The Soviet snipers are a little bit further back. The conscripts push forward. They're trying to go for the cap. The sniper will turn its sights around, get a shot off on the conscript. The counter-snipe goes off. Yep, there it goes. Nice counter-snipe there for Kursakov, keeping their snipers, his snipers in cloak and holding fire so that they do not expose themselves. Immediately, we see Osa replacing his sniper as he does want to have a sniper still on the field. We see a Stuka Barrage going off somewhere up in the north. Oh, Nails squad. Looks like it may have been a Shock Troop squad. Eliminates it completely. So that is not a bad use of that Stuka right there. Look at that squad completely wrecked. Center map, we do have a T-34 now on the field for Kursakov with a T-70 coming up. Yeah, T-70. So he went for... No, he went for Garden Mortar. Okay. T-70 pushes forward. There is nothing on the field for the German players to stop it. We do have a pack gun in the center of the map for Osa, but it's not in range. And we have a Shrek on one of the Volksgren squads for Mr. Bulgakov. 
and it is nowhere to be seen. It's up in the north. It's actually currently taking down a munitions package. T-70 also moving up to the north. Again, they're going to be able to inflict massive amounts of damage here to these guys. I believe the Fusiliers also have the ability to Faust. Yeah, I believe they have the ability to throw a Faust. Because uh, they can supposedly disable vehicles. So we are going to see if that comes into play. They actually end up retreating, so we're not going to see if it comes into play. And the Volksgrins are as well retreating since shock troops are chasing them down. Oh no, they get stopped in the way by the T-70 and the T-34. They are also in the mix of the shock troop squad. This Volkswagen squad may not actually make it out. The Fusiliers are running. T-34 and the Shark Troops are chasing these uh, guys down. One of them stops. T-70 now focusing it, or well, moving down to focus on this squad. Down to two men. The Grand Squad moves into the way. Oh, a nasty shot there. Takes it down to one man. The Grand Squad does throw a foul stuff on the T-70. Manages to disable it, but ends up getting itself killed. We do have an abandoned MG-30, sorry, MG-42 LMG, more likely. Uh, but there's no vehicles nearby to pick it up, so I think it's going to be recovered here by the Grins very easily. Grins are actually able to pick it up, so they can have two at the same time, which is nice. A Faust once again goes off on the T-34. The T-34 now getting shot by the AT gun. The pack gun getting some nice shots off. Down to a sliver of, well, not sliver, not really, but down to very low amounts of health at about maybe 25% strength at best. The Grins are going to push forward. They can get in range to Faust once again. We do have enough munitions to do so, and you may be able to take it out. But it doesn't look like he's inclined to do so. We see Volksgren squad moving up. Fusilier is also getting caught there by the T-70. Grins with their double LMGs opening up on the shock troops, not being able to do too much. They need to retreat. There goes a grenade. They do retreat, and away they go. Pack gun in range of the T-70. The T-70 will make itself known if it continues to push forward. The pack gun now backing off since it has no infantry support. And it does have a Fusilier squad a little bit behind it that will be able to stop the Shark Troops from just simply pushing all the way forward. Stuka Barrage into the center. Oh, misses. And it nails the Conscript squad a little bit, collapses the house, which is nice, but it missed this big blob here of Maxim Machine Guns. That would have been an excellent shot, but so far nothing happened. Battlegroup headquarters on the field for Volkakov in the center. Not a bad idea to have it there. I do wonder if he does have the retreat position here. I mean, he does have a lot of focused infantry there. He does have more infantry back there, so maybe not. But it is still a nice position to be able to move his troops out and reinforce and heal up. Up in the north, the T-70 is back to working order, even though it is at half strength. We do have a uh, racket and warfare. Takes a nice shot at this T-70, brings it down to a sliver of health, but it stays alive. Oh, if only the Stuka was online and operational, it still needs, uh, well, I actually can't see it, but I'm pretty sure it still needs some uh, cooldown. But wow, that is a big blob there of infantry, just so clumped up. We see a popping here of, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that's propaganda. It forces an infantry squad to retreat, and the shock troops are forced to retreat. Oh, a nasty incendiary barrage right on top of Volkakov's forces. Ends up retreating, so it does not look like he has this at the retreat point, although it does have that little buff there, so I think it actually does have it, but he ends up retreating and going back home, so that's fine. Panther, now on the field for Osa. He skips his tier 3 and goes all the way to tier 4. Panther will be able to combat the T-34 very easily. T-34 can get a ram. No, never mind. No, cannot get a ram. We do see a Mark vehicle going down on the Panther. Panther getting shot at on the rear with an AT nade. Gets it disabled on the engine. The T-34 can actually do a lot of damage to it. It needs to just focus and shoot the T-34 rather than messing around and shooting the infantry. T-34 pushes forward as it does have the Mark on the Panther. The Panther is just not able to do too much. A nice Stuka barrage right on top of the uh, machine guns here, but they actually pull back and stay alive. T-34 a little bit aggressively now, pushes forward, gonna get shot by the Panther. The Panther should be able to finish it off even with the marked vehicle. Gun destroyed on the T-34. The T-34 gonna try to get itself out of there. The Grenz did blow their Faust. The Puma, the, Mera Puma, the Panther is just backing off. Grenz gonna chase it down to get another Faust off and finish it off. Boom, there goes the T-34, and the Grand's retreat since the shock troop getting right on top of it. 
Sniper once again back on the field. Only uh, three kills to the same so far, so not really too effective, but there you go. The Stuka. 14 kills to its name. Down south we see a pushing with Fusadiers and Storm Pioneers by Mr. Volgakov. Conscript squad down to two men, barely makes it out of there. We do have another T-34 on the field down south to stop the approaching infantry. Fusiliers do decap the point. These ones may be able to get in range to potentially foul. We do have a sniper still on the field for Kersakov. 15 kills to its name, better to two acquired. It sprints out of the way, gets itself behind the cover of the conscripts, and the conscripts stop them with the help of the T-34. From the north, we do have a mortar here for the red player. It is the 120 millimeter mortar, so it's able to just simply barrage here. It actually knows specifically where the headquarters is, so it can very easily just bombard this area and continuously get, you know, some some kills. The officer providing some buffs here as the, uh, the infantry just moves around. The buff says that it provides... Uh, Oh yeah, the unit is inspired to fight harder. If nearby storm officer dies, the unit will retreat. So yeah, if the unit itself, like the the officer NPC or entity inside the squad dies, the units retreat. But otherwise, it actually provides a buff to the troops. So it's a nice little mechanic there. Grenade goes off on top of the Panzer Grenadiers. Kills one of them, but not too much. Are these the Grens with both LMGs? No, it only has one. Oh, we saw a Stuka Barrage falling on top of an AT gun and the mortar. Didn't actually do too much. T-70 runs into the Panther, realizes, hey, you're a little bit bigger than I expected, and gets itself killed. Down south, we still have that T-34 covering the zone. Grin's pushing up. I believe these are the double equipped. No, never mind. Pretty sure they are. You can see it right there. It's still alive, though, once it reinforces, but... Yeah, that double LMG Grin is quite a beast against infantry. Panther covering the uh, northern point. Victory points down to 220 for the Germans. 353 still left for the Soviets. And still no Tiger Ace on the field because Osa has not selected his Doctrine, but he does need 15 points to get it, so, I mean, I guess he doesn't really mind. There are other abilities, obviously, for the, uh, you know, for the Doctrine, which he could utilize. For example, Panzer Tactician would help out his, uh, well, his Panther quite significantly. But, I mean, yeah, he's seemingly just interested in getting that. Molotov goes off on the MG42 for Osa. Osa probably gonna pack it up and retreat it. No, he actually seems to be content to sit in the fire. Guard squad just uh, getting stopped there by the MG42. Fusiliers and everything forced to retreat. Incendiary barrage right on top of everything. The MG42 tries to retreat, but gets itself killed. And the shock troops gets a lot of damage in on the retreating troops. The troops retreat back to the headquarters. Well, not the headquarters, but the battle group headquarters. And the, uh, the pack gun is retreating. Should be able to reinforce itself. It is nearby the headquarters. But it's not getting reinforced. Just hit that. Oh, uh, well, there he goes. KV-8 moves up. Does what it needs to do. Panther now going to be focusing on it. It is marked. But there is nothing nearby that can actually damage it very easily. We do have guard squads on the field. They could potentially button it. And they do. Yeah, button it goes down on the Panther. The Panther will take some damage here from the... PTRS rifles, but that is about it. There's not too much that it has to worry about. 18-8s could come up. Again, this is a situation where the Panzer Tactician could help out. Ooh, a nasty Stuka barrage right on top of the guards. Forces the retreat, but doesn't actually kill the squads. And the KV-8 is back there, still a little bit damaged. Conscripts trying to push forward, get themselves forced to retreat. The Fusiliers at all, the infantry here for the Germans just pushing down south. Panther could just simply push forward. And we have guards capturing the center victory point as the northern point is also getting capped by Coconut Doug. So even though they did manage to break that assault, the victory points will be triple bled for a little while at least. And uh, that's not going to be very nice. Ah, Germans are down to less than 200 points, 192 to be exact. Down south, Fusiliers are... Trying to go for the fuel, but they decide to... No, they actually decided they actually want the fuel. Panther pushes forward. The KV-8 has long since left that zone and is now back at the Soviet base. And will get reinforced. 
And the Germans with their LMGs, the uh, Garens with their LMGs, double LMG on this squad, quite a badass. We'll be able to just uh, shred all the infantry that comes up against them. Double LMGs, they just need a little bit of setup and shots will fly. Panther moving into support, we'll be able to get some nice shots off into the house. Actually hits the front of the door while the troops were getting in there and does a little bit of splash damage. LMGs doing what they do, getting a lot of damage into the squad inside the house with the support of the Panther. They actually pop out of the house and retreat right in front of the Grents. Can they actually make it out? No! Wrong way to retreat. Should have had to uh, pop out of the house through the side. Brave the uh, the Panther rather than the uh, Grents with LMGs. And they may have actually made it out of there. Stuka looks like it threw another barrage into the center. Did a little bit of damage there to the Max Machine Gun, but not too much. We have a Rakuten Warfer and an MG42. Oh, the MG42 was recovered here by Bulgakov. Getting burned alive, this Rakuten Warfer needs to move the hell out of there. And then reinforce. And we have the gun on top and the main gun of the Panther. She's getting some shots off here at the Maxim Machine Guns. Actually doing a lot of damage since they're pretty clumped up together. And we see that a conscript has thrown an 18-8 and the guards are getting some PTRS shots off on that Panther, forcing it to back off. AT gun on the field for Coconut Duck, getting some nice shots off at the Panther, although it bounces off the frontal armor, which is very unfortunate. But again, we have a lot of infantry troops in the center here. Focused for the German forces. They're going to push and be able to force away the, uh, the Soviet troops. Guard squad's trying to hold the line. A nice grenade right on top of all the combined infantry. Sniper on the field takes a little bit of damage. Needs to retreat as we see an incendiary barrage right on top of everything. They retreat back to base rather than back to the headquarters or battle group headquarters. And the sniper stays on the field quite heroically. Panther sitting in the fire getting a little bit burned. Gets shot at by the AT gun as it pushes forward. We do have an IS, no, T-3485 combat group on the field for Kursakov. Kursakov obviously has the guard mortar coordinations which is what gives him that sniper trying to retreat. Retreats through the flame. Oh, gets shot by the T-3485. The uh, LMG is dropped by the Garand squad, but it gets picked up. And the sniper is now off the field. Oh, a lot of losses here for the German forces. They are being backed off into their corner while the southern portion of the map is just getting capped by everything. We actually see a shock troop squad with an LMG equipped. That is quite frightening. And the Fusilier squad is retreating from the center as the T-3485 took a little bit of damage there to the Raketenwerfer and the pack gun. Rush going off by the by the Stuka. It was aiming at the AT gun, but it misses. And there you go. Panther still trying to hold the line, getting repaired here by the uh, Pios and the battle group headquarters. I mean the regiment headquarters. Sorry, so it is back to full strength. No additional vehicles, but with 16 points to his name, I mean he can already go call in a Tiger Ace. Obviously, needs more resources to do so. I believe it is, I believe it's what, like 700 manpower? I believe so. I forget, haven't actually seen it uh, being used by the uh, main player for a while now, but well, we'll see. Ooh, Jack Panther getting called in by Volkov. I don't think we've ever seen this in the replays. Jack Panther Jack Tiger, Panzer Jaeger, Tiger Aus V. The Jack Tiger or Hunting Tiger is one of the most powerful tank destroyers uh, on any battlefield. Its extremely potent 128mm Pack 44 main gun can destroy any enemy tank while armor up to 250mm thick keeps the Jack Tiger on the front lines. Its poor maneuverability is its Achilles heel. So you can see that it is very slow but it is apparently very powerful. We see engine improvements. Experienced crew members make simple modifications to improve the massive power plant of Jack Tiger. These will allow it to move and rotate more responsibly. So yeah, there you go. You upgrade it for a little bit. I don't know how much it, it cost it, or cost, I should say cost it. How much it cost, uh, but it is acquired and the Jack Tiger is now able to provide some support. We also now have another Panther on the field for Mr. Osa, so. Getting two Panthers before he wants to get his Tiger Ace. And down south we have an IS-2 for Coconut Doug, flanked by two T-3485, so that is nothing to be, uh, well, shouldn't say ashamed of, but here we go. The Jack Tiger turns its sights. 
Gets a nice shot off there at a distance at the IS-2. Doing nice penetration on the armor. Not exactly sure how much range it has, but I would assume it has massive range. Oh, there goes the shot. IS-2 taking down to less than half health now. The pack guns pushing up. The uh, Panthers getting flanked here by 1T3485. Unable to penetrate. Gets a nice armor hit there by the PTR rest rifles, it looks like. But the T3485 getting focused now. The Yak Tiger getting some shots off at a distance. Boom! Nails the T3485 before it moves out of the way. Down to less than half health. The Panthers continue to push forward. The guard squad's just getting uh, annihilated there by the Panzer Fusiliers. And that Yak Tiger is going to be quite a beast. beast. We see the Tiger is now getting called in. It actually requires 800 manpower to call in. So that means that Volgakov can actually call it in right now if he so desires. Uh, yeah, he actually has enough uh, population to be able to do so. So there you go. IS-2 down south getting uh, repaired as it took massive amounts of damage. We have the AT gun there, but the victory points are down to 73 for the German forces, so they need to be careful. We see a Stuka barrage falling right on top of the enemy 120mm mortar. Clears it out, and at least they don't have to worry about that. KV-8 up in the north, still alive, still doing some damage. Incendiary barrage right on top of everything. Forces the retreat of some troops. The Panzer Grenadiers just back off to get themselves reinforced. And the Panthers are just uh, covering the Fusiliers as they, as they push forward. Tiger Ace now on the field. We see the resource production now come essentially to a halt here for Mr. Uh, Osa. 81 manpower per minute and one fuel. That is quite nasty. The munitions are still fine, but yeah. That one fuel is... Quite brutal. He cannot afford to lose his Panthers now. Tiger is moving up to the north, however. Since we don't have Fog of War, we can actually see if the bulletin actually had effect with increasing its sight range three times. But so far, it doesn't look like it's going to matter too much. Tiger Ace right on top of that Maxim machine gun. Going to clear it out very quickly. It is the Tiger Race. There goes the uh, Maxim machine gun. It actually gets destroyed. And the Grants are able to capture the northern point. KVA trying to hold the line. Won't be able to hold too much against that... King Tiger victory points down to 40 for the German forces. They are now going to be, well, they actually stopped the bleed now at 40. Going to be able, no, they actually abandoned that point. I'm not exactly sure why. Got to run straight into a mine. Take two two guys damage there. They uh, got a little bit choreographed. Chore, 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 oh, I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Oh, nasty shots there on the side armor of the IS-2. The IS-2 also going to get focused here by the... Jack, no, the Jack is actually focusing up in the north, Jack Tiger. Panthers trying to hold the line against this guy. We do have a pack gun on the field. Gets more shots off on the IS-2. The IS-2 down to less than 50% strength. KV-8, not KV-8, uh, T-3485 pushes forward. The uh, Panthers backing off. We see massive push here by infantry troops. AT gun pushing up as well. The uh, Jack Tiger is looking up to the north. No MG on the field to stop the, sh the, uh, the shock troops from pushing forward. They're going to clear out that pack gun very easily. And there it goes. And the t 3485s push up. And the Panthers are backing off to where they can. KV-8 may have gotten eliminated. No, it's actually still there. We see the Tiger race up in the north. Moving down for a little bit of a pincer maneuver. We have the Panther still on the field. Jack Tiger turns its sights. Oh, nasty shot on the T-3045. Nasty return shot there by the Panther, but it makes it out of there. And the Tiger is now focusing on the combat engineers in the center. The Tiger race in the center of the map, getting some shots off. Not actually hitting the guard squad in the house. That's quite surprising. And we see the call-in of... Mark Vigil? No, it looks like it may have been a strafing run. I forget what it is. Anyways, one of the uh, Panthers did go down. Shock troops retreating from the center. We see more shots just flying all over the place. Guard squad there. Tiger Race trying to take out the shock troop squad. It is down to one man. We see a dropped PTRS rifle that could be picked up by anybody. It's picked up by a Grand squad. Shock troop squad down to one man. Barely makes it out. The second squad is down to two. Oh, that one does get eliminated. T-3485 is now back to full strength, pushing forward. That is actually a brand new group. We have the other one still down south, damaged. 
So with four of them and the support of an IS-2, that's not, uh, you know, that's not a piece of cake. Tiger Ace is an ace, but it isn't omnipotent. Not anymore. Shots flying, doing a lot of damage there to the infantry of Mr. Kersakov. 120 meter mortar getting some shots off at a distance. The conscript squad goes down to the Tiger Ace. So no more infantry there to have to deal with, really. And the IS-2 is just getting shot at by all points. The uh, Yak Tiger getting some nice shots off at a distance. Gets The Tiger Race gets into the mix here, right in between the, the T-3485s and the uh, the IS-2. The uh, Jack Tiger pushes up, gets a shot off at the T-3485 that is currently just locked inside that house, unable to do too much. The Yak Tiger needs to turn itself around a little bit to get more support in there. Gets another shot off on the T-3485. T-3485s push forward. There's three of them all together now. The other one is a little bit caught behind that house. Trying to get a flank off on the Jack Tiger, but they're actually focusing on the Tiger Ace. The Tiger Ace getting shot off from all directions, taking quite a bit of punishment. The Jack Tiger finishing off one of the T-3045s. The second one will be falling here to the Jack Tiger. Crew Shock on top of the Jack Tiger allows this one to back off a little bit. The main gun gets destroyed. The Shreks on the Panzer Grenadiers will be able to finish it off. And there it goes, out of control. The other tank finally manages to get itself dislodged from the house. And we now have two T-3485s that are currently at about half strength still on the field. IS-2 also about half strength still left on the field. But we now have a double cap against the so I mean the German forces down to 21 points. They need to get a grip on that because otherwise they're going to be going down. We do see that Panzer. No, Volksgrenadiers are capturing points down south with the support of a Fusilier and Cindier Barrage right on top of the Volksgrenadiers. The Volksgrenadiers are going to try to move out of the way. T-3485 is falling on top of them. They did manage to get the decap of the point, which stops the bleed at 18 points, but they need to get a grip on that. They need to, to fix it and stop that because they're otherwise going to lose due to victory points. Tiger A still on the field. We see something getting produced here for his buddy Volkov, and that was a... Another uh, Stuka. The Stuka half-track did get taken out at one point. It is right there. That is the carcass. And the battle group headquarters, no, sorry, regiment headquarters is getting the uh, Tiger Ace repaired. The, uh, the Yak Tiger and a Panther are pushing down south. They're going to have to... Oh, a nasty shot there by the Yak Tiger actually nails his own troops. Did not get a friendly kill, but it did a little bit of splash damage. Panther moves up, it gets itself marked, but with the help of the Yak Tiger, the T-3485 goes out of control. Second T-3485 is getting the hell out of there, it goes up north. We see the IS-2 moving down, gonna try and get some shots off on that Panther as it is currently marked. But it is supported here by the Yak Tiger, the Yak Tiger aiming at something. Oh, takes a nasty shot on the side armor of the IS-2, the IS-2 will be going down, not even moving. Yak Tiger will finish it off and... Boom! It actually gets abandoned. That could actually get recovered. Gets recovered very quickly there by the guard squad. Trying to move it out of the way. The Yak Tiger will not let it go. Takes another shot. And now down it goes. Finishing off that tie. Down to eight points, however, for the German forces. But they managed to stabilize as they have captured both points. Panther pulling back. Tiger now almost fully repaired. It's at about 95% strength. Pushes forward. Getting some shots off at the AT gun and the mortar. T-3045 pushes up, but it's going to get itself killed here to the Tiger Ace. Tiger Ace turning itself around, not allowing its turret to catch up with the T-34. And there it goes. It goes down as we did have a PTR rest rifle on that Grand Squad. They actually get the vehicle kill. Yep, there's a PTR rest rifle. And we still have a KV-8 in the center. However, all the, uh, the vehicle forces have been lost for the Soviets. Eight points left for the Germans, but they don't seem to be able to continue to push forward. They are having to back off now. They have a KV-8 in the center, trying to burn all the squats alive. Getting a little bit damaged here. Now focused by the Yak Tiger and the Tiger Ace. The Yak Tiger at a distance, getting some shots off. And down goes the KV-8 with no more armor to support them and no troops left. I don't see the Soviets pulling back here. It looks like the Germans may have pulled this off. And the mortar is still being a pain in the ass. and just continues to barrage them. Up in the north, the Fusilier squad is going to go to cap the victory point. Down south, we have Grants patrolling the area as Fusiliers are also moving down with an LMG equipped. GG, boys. We have the grand total of rice, <laughs> Kersakov says. 
as they no longer have anything. Bulgakov throwing a little bit of a, uh, I don't know what that would be, frowny face? Kursov and Coconut surrender, and that is game. The Allies throw in the towel as they have lost everything to the forces of the Germans who stayed alive with eight points left. Very nice game. And very nice to see that Jack Tiger had not seen it in play. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.